We crawl further upstream and begin to see fishy shapes in the watery mist. Up ahead, there's a whole school of coho. These fish have not eaten since they left the Salish Sea and began swimming up the Skagit, so it's important that they conserve their strength for spawning. That's why they've gathered where the roots of an overhanging tree slow the current. The salmon are very focused on each other, reading cues, jockeying for position, and checking out potential mates. They don't see us as a threat, so we discreetly join the school to get a closer look. Coho are also known as silver salmon, which is their primary color during their years at sea. Now, as they return to freshwater as mature three-year-olds, they shift into their spawning apparel of green and red. The females wear muted colors, while the males sport startling shades from crimson to deep burgundy. A color change is just the beginning for the males. In preparation for mating, their heads deform dramatically with their snouts and jaws contorting into what are called kipes, hooked weapons bristling with sharp teeth. The boys brandish these nasty new snouts and chase and sometimes even bite rivals as they compete for access to mates. Females skip the full werewolf transformation. They do change color, but if the spawn is to be successful, it's critical for them to dedicate most of their energy reserves to egg production and to building and defending their nests. Each coho mama in the school is carrying 2,000 or more eggs, and she must infuse every one of those little orange orbs with enough nutrients to sustain a baby salmon for about two months. <laughs> 